again, Flummies. Danny Ray here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are continuing our learning with the cane. Mwah! That'll be a nice clickbaity thumbnail. <laughs> so in my last video, we kind of went over the tips and tricks to get you started with the cane. Hopefully get you used to kind of playing around with it, trying some things out. So what I have for you today is five beginner tricks for the cane. We're gonna keep building off the concepts that we learned in the last video. So if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check it out. I'll link it down below. So with that being said, uh, let's get to it. My dragons are going to hate me. So in my last video, we went over isolations where you can isolate the balance point balance point. I kept calling it the center point in the last video and it was making me so mad while I was editing because I didn't want to do it all over again. But it is called the balance point because that is where it is balanced. So we focus on isolating that. You know, we focus on isolating the hook where we move the cane and then we focus on isolating the end which is the same general concept, just try to move along with it. So now we're gonna isolate the entire cane. And you just saw, ha, that's one way to do it. So if you do it with both hands, basically, you just wanna keep it balanced while your hands are open. And you'll wanna move them quick enough so that you can grab it again before it moves too much. Because if you just let it sit, it is going to wobble. That's just physics. But if you do it quick enough, Just like that. And you can open up your hands at the end because now both sides are being held. It's not really balancing anymore. Bum, bum, ba -da! And you can do it one-handed. So if one-handed, it's easier to have it horizontal as opposed to vertical. Vertical, it is possible, but it's tricky. It takes a lot more practice. You can do it, but for now, we're gonna keep it horizontal and you're gonna let go of the cane with the top of your hand, just enough so it looks like there's still a grip, but it's actually hollow inside. You can kind of see the space right there. And then you're just gonna quickly slide it to another part of the cane. Start with a firm grip, and then the other end will wobble a bit sometimes. That's just normal, especially right now because I'm trying to do it slow. The easiest way to speed it up is to kind of use some momentum from, say, a downswing. So I'm gonna swing it down this way, and then I'm going to one hand isolate it to bring my hand back this way, and then bring it up to go around again. So speed it up. See that? And again, practice this on both hands. Aha. Another way you can isolate this is, I call it a float, it might be called something else. I kind of took it from Levy One, but this actual trick I learned from Slide Lomala Cane, and I will link that video below because I just love that routine so much. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the balance point between your index and middle fingers. I find this has the best control. You could do it between your thumb and your palm. That's got a pretty good sense of control too, but I don't think it looks as magical. So just, ta-da, and it looks like it's floating. So you can move around it. And you can do some levy wand tricks here. Don't forget the magic hand. Just a fair warning, canes are kind of wide. So having them between your fingers like that does hurt after a little while. So I don't recommend practicing that for too long at a time. So moving on, palm spins. Palm spins are exactly what they sound like. Your prop is on your palm, the cane is flopping down because the hook <laughs> messes with the balance. Prop is on your palm, and then you spin it. And yet make sure it's away from your body enough that you don't end up whacking yourself. So you can use your thumb to flick it in one direction, and then you can use your index finger to flick it the other way. Uh -huh. If you feel brave enough, you can spin it above your head. Uh -huh. Even better, you guys, you can travel with it. 
Start above your head, bring it around to the front and to the other side. The only thing is, canes are slippery. So be very, very careful if you're doing it above your head. So my last video we went over hand wraps. And that's basically just you lift one side of the cane and let it kind of fall to the back of your hand. And then you're gonna kind of bring the other side of the cane up and catch it to the side here. And then you can go the other way. If you do keep doing it in the same direction, you will eventually get to the end. So make sure that you can do it in both directions so that that doesn't happen. You can also wrap it around your elbow. So if you grab it by the hook, bring it right underneath your elbow, and you'll wanna make sure it has enough momentum to actually stay on your arm. So it'll have this position here, and then you can grab it from the other end here. And again, on the other arm. Oh this next trick actually comes from hoop. It's called the mandala. So it looks like this. So we're gonna grab the cane by the hook with the cane facing up. I'm keeping my arms bent because if I do it all the way up, I'm gonna hit my ceiling. So not gonna do that. I'm gonna start with my arms bent. Obviously if you're outside, yes, you can have your arm all the way up. But for now, I'm gonna keep it right here. This is a good and happy medium. I'm not about to hit my light. So you're gonna bring the cane over to the side. When you get to this point, you're gonna kind of drop your cane to come behind you and then lift it back up. And your palm will still be facing behind you. So you're gonna bring it behind your back. Again, arm bent because I don't wanna hit my floor. And when it is behind you, you're just gonna swap hands, bring it out. And when you get to this point, drop the cane to fall behind you again. I'm trying to do it slow, that's why it's wobbly. You're gonna drop your cane again, bring it up. Your palm is gonna stay facing away from you. And then you're gonna switch hands here in the front. So from the front, and then from the back, And if you do get a little more daring, you can add a spin to the transition points. So it'll look like this. And being able to do that actually creates an in-spin flower behind you. Last up for today, we have the corkscrew. Step back a little bit here. So we already did a variation of the corkscrew with the cane balancing on our finger, or the hook of the cane balancing on our finger. With our palms coming in, out, around, and then back again. You're gonna do the same motion, but from the balance point of the cane. So just gonna turn, out, bring it up, around, and out again. And then of course you wanna practice it in both directions. And yet, because the cane is kind of long, you will you will have to like kind of bend in to avoid getting hit. You stay straight, boom. And of course, practice with both hands. Thank you for watching, Flummies. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you practice more cane. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment which trick was your favorite. And also if you have suggestions for new videos. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more fun with flow arts. I love you all and I hope you have an amazing flow journey. Bye! Gomez is not happy with me. I tapped the tank with my cane earlier and he is just not having it. I'm sorry, baby. That can happen too. Be careful.